more in the store. I also have other things for all retailers. We're giving 20% off if they buy anything else in the shop. So spread the word. Um, there's lots to go around and I have more coming in. I, I didn't order tons at once because I wasn't sure how many needed them or would take advantage of this. Thanks, Marie. Right. Marie, thanks for um, handling the awkward silence while I get the recording going. So yes. we are recording now for the record of those who are just joining. We had a, a vote to approve the minutes of uh, three meetings and we reported that um, Marie has been approved by the select board and will be able to participate as soon as she is sworn in. So hopefully at our meeting two weeks from now. Okay, um, moving on to our update section of the agenda. Um, who would like to lead off for the town? <laughs> I nominate Stephen. <laughs> um, that's actually good because I, I unfortunately have a hard stop at, at 4.30. Um, so uh, just briefly, you know, we're, I think we, I don't know, do we talk, did we talk about parking last time? You told um, us that we were going to be reinstating parking fees. On, on, as we sit here now on April 20th. Okay. Yes. Um, it's because between this, the business partnership and Concord together uh, and some of the same faces, sometimes I'm not really <laughs> sure where I said what. Um, but so yes, that's gonna happen. Um, I think I also mentioned outdoor dining last time we were here, we are gonna purchase some barriers, um, some of the orange ones, which are a little more sightly than the cement ones um, for, either outdoor dining or we do more um, outdoor retail events. Um, I think the planning board is working on their, um, um, their bylaw about outdoor dining as well for town meeting. Uh, the warrant is posted. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have that I can think of right now. And my phone just rang in completely throw off my train of thought. Well, your new so, office looks comfortable. Yes. Okay. So Beth, I'll throw it to you. Sorry, can the orange um, barriers be painted as well or decorated or anything? Um, orange ones are hard because they're, they're like, they've got the slits. Is that the ones you mean? The cement ones we talked about painting, but. Right, you know, yeah. The, the orange ones are, are they look, the orange ones are basically Jersey barriers that you yeah. fill with water. And I don't think we could permanently like mark them up because they need to be that color for traffic when we use it for traffic purposes. Um, but we can talk about about that. Um, you know, we could as, wrap them. I mean, they could be yeah. wrapped. With the, right. Um, the That's what I was thinking. Is wrapping? Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Something like that. Or, that or would just, come off. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I I I'll have to talk to Aaron about that so I don't get in trouble with him. Aaron McClosco, <laughs> our superintendent of Highway and Brown, so I don't get in trouble with him. But. Um, I don't see a reason why, you know, if it's street facing, I don't know that I would do that, but certainly like the inside that's, that's customer facing maybe. Um, but let's, I think I'd want to see a plan first and, and like, like how you're going to mount it. And, um, I just didn't know if it was for safety reasons. You got the orange ones or if that's what we could get, or if it was a price thing, I've just, I've seen other towns decorate them. And I know we spoke about the, the, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the concrete one. So it was just a, an idea if we can obviously would make it not as uh, unsightly yeah no I, we, I i i think we probably can i just don't know i just haven't you know researched that question enough um it's a fun project with uh for, for people to get into as well it seems like people really enjoy doing that and i event. think um the ones that you had you move in and out each day i've seen people hang like fake plants off of them or, or planters off of them so again I, I think if it's an inside so it's not impacting safety um anything to make them you know look more festive for diners is is a great great idea um i bet too that that would be a really great thing for um some of the schools to get involved in i mean the students were asking about um decorating the vaccination center if we were going to be able to vaccinate the community so that would be i'm sure a thing that the schools would be really interested in participating in as well yeah I mean, idea. We, you know i, I think it's said this said um, conquered, uh, conquered together. Like when you think, make this as an extension of the picnic table thing we did last year, which was kind of cool. It's more like permanently de defacing the barriers, um, or if they're out in the street for a closure. I don't know. Like I said, having that visibility would be important. But if there's a way to do it 
um, where it can make it more attractive for like if they're not in the right of way, we, I'm sure we could do something. Um, so the other thing is, yeah, um, we did get a grant, a, a shout out to uh, Beth and Marsha. We did get a, a, a mass officer travel and tourism um, grant <laughs> to partner with the town of Lexington. Uh, two, two towns, one story or something like that, Beth. Oh, our tagline? Yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. yeah it's, <laughs> it, it, it's a great partnership with Lexington. We're doing, we're doing a lot more with them than I think we've done in the past. Um, you know, it's only in Lexington and Concord that, you know, that the view is that we are two very different places and, you know, shouldn't work together because one of us was first and the other wasn't. And we've been arguing about it since 1775. <laughs> um, uh, every other, the rest of the world looks at it as Lexington and Concord. Uh, and so um, the teams that are in place now, um, you know, work, know each other and work well together. And so we're trying to, to build more um tourism and, and economic vitality efforts uh jointly so that, that, that's also ongoing as far as the barriers go i've had good luck painting on tyvac and it might be they could be wrapped and taped with a tyvac and paint on that yeah yeah like that, 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 steve i think you're right i think it's if you use if you use the right tape it should be fine it's not that cheap duct tape that always leaves residue oh right burn that I've been burned by many, many times at home. <laughs> um, right. Yeah, I don't, uh, that's the biggest thing. That grant has to be spent by July 15th. So it is a very quick, um, so before we submitted the grant, my counterpart and I came up with an advertising plan that we're reviewing this week and sharing with the town managers. And uh, most of the dates of the ads that'll start running will be in May. 90% of it will be digital advertising so that we can have rotating Lexington Concord ads and joint ads. Um, we're looking at Boston Globe Magazine. They do a great travel section. We're looking at digital with boston.com and boston.globe. And we are looking at Visit New England, which covers regional travel. The grant has stipulations, obviously, because it came from the state. We have to use the MOT logo, and it has to really uh, talk about the um, push that they're doing, which is the My Local MA. So we're really focusing a very tight uh, geographic radius of New England. So we are looking at possibly GBH. Um, and the other thing we allocated some funding to is to collect some videography and some photography so that we can create a TV spot that we can use now and then own for being able to use separately as towns as we move forward in marketing or um, as more joint. So uh, we're really excited that we got it. We got about 50% of what we asked for. Um, and that seems in line with all of the other DMOs that applied. Um, so we're really um, excited to put that effort out. Um, it should do great. Um, and yeah, we are open um, this weekend next, five days a week, nine to three, staffed by me. And then I've got some staff coming in to help out. Um, all of you know the Natural Resources Department put out a trail guide. Um, I'm selling 50 a day, um, which is <laughs> insane. <laughs> the amount of foot traffic in and out of the visitor center um, is awesome. Um, and a lot of people have never been there. They're now my new local tourists. Um, we do have some people coming from further away, but um, I, I didn't know the book was coming out now and it's been awesome like to have to actually have staff in in order to be able to to make these sales and and then they're buying other things and they're taking tours which um is really great um and i can tell you today the town was hopping the parking lot was full um and and we're continuing to get inquiries for 2021 for groups for fall and for 22 so um i think everybody the more people are vaccinated the more people are out um so i have good news and I'm happy to share it. <laughs> uh, one more, I got a question for the town. Um, you commented last meeting, Stephen, that there was um, a likelihood of more federal funds coming in through the new kind of the latest legislation. Do we have a sense as to how much the town might get and what we would be able or inclined to spend that on? So the, the number is five and a half million. Um, and the there is a series of eligible uses um, Economic recovery is a big one. Water, sewer, broadband infrastructure is another one. There's some um, pay provisions for essential employees. 
um, and uh, uh, revenue offset revenue losses. And so, and the big thing is unlike CARES Act, which uh, we thought was a tighter deadline, um, but they ended up extending this, they've already said that this fund, these funds expired December 31st, 2024. And so I think we're gonna try and take a, a slow roll on, on these funds. Um, I'll give you an example. Right now I'm looking at the barriers that we're purchasing. Um, use, I mean, it's pretty short money. So if, if ARPA, it's the American Recovery Plan Act, ARPA, and if the and the whole world is waiting on the Treasury Department to issue guidance on how they can be spent, we're moving ahead with a couple of smaller items that we could probably cover in the town budget if ARPA said no, but we believe they're going to be covered. Um, I do think we want to create uh, a, a small business assistance fund, and I think we we should have a, we should all have a conversation about what that should look like, depending on what the Treasury guidance says. But we should figure out what that can look like. Um, and I also know from, you know, not, I'm a, setting aside the cell tower discussion that is on kind of a separate plane. I do know that there was a lot, there were connectivity issues to both Comcast and the town's broadband network in certain areas. And so is, is that something we should look at those funds to maybe work on, you know, broadband deployment uh, or water and sewer? So. Uh, the big one of the biggest things that we, we I think have on the front burner for that is is um, restoring some of the lost revenues um, to off, to help offset the need to carry forward unused appropriation in the FY22 from FY21 to FY22 and then that unused appropriation could go into free cash um, to be potentially you know, used for something else down the line. Um, I think it's going to be a million and one uses to be honest with you. Uh, I don't see one big five and a half million dollar project, but we're still waiting for guidance to really see how we're going to prioritize that. Thank you. Any other questions for the uh, tower, our fabulous town representatives before we go on to Concord together? Before me. You're done, right? Yeah, no, but you said the fabulous town representatives. I know you were referring to Marsha and Beth. Oh, you're so modest, Stephen. So modest. Um, I was referring to all of you. Um, okay, uh, Concord Together. I was not on the last Concord Together call. Jen McGonigal, were you there? Anyone here on that call? All right. Uh, Marie and I, I was on it. Yeah, yeah, I was on it, yeah. Um, uh, guys, I'm gonna sign off. Thanks, um, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Stephen. Well, someone wanna fill us in on any recent developments? Marie's been reporting on everything under the sun. Um, I think um, the biggest thing is getting the spirit of Concord out there um, and making sure that um, we got a message out that the buntings are available, that we've had some very generous private donors that have allowed Marie to purchase more bunting than she normally would have, and that we are allow, you know, we are opening our door, so to speak, to um, make sure people can have them, to use them, to decorate. Um, as Marie mentioned, I have them in the visitor center. She has them and we delivered a bunch to uh, Helen today in West Concord at the florist to make sure that you can all access them and, and bring them. Um, we did our final drawing for the takeout 10. And I have to say, since I got to call the winner, um, I sh I'll share this story. I shared it. So apologies if you saw it Concord together. So the woman that won, um, her name is Carrie, and this is her second time winning. Um, she entered several times. She entered the Concord Solstice several times. She's a local resident. And when I called her, she was on her way to volunteer for a vaccination clinic and was feeling, you know, rather dejected about the whole pandemic and the fact that she's, you know, off to like vaccinate, you know, as many people as she could in a day and how winning that totally made her day. And now she's going to like do takeout again and use them, you know, use those gift cards. And um, I said, that's, that's why we did this. That's why Concord Together started. We wanted to help the businesses. We wanted to make sure the residents showed the love and they did. And um, she was absolutely a delightful. And I, I'm happy to be able to share that story because she was she was just super. Um, and then Ramon, do you want to talk about the dessert? Sure. Unfortunately, I missed the last call, so I'm not sure if there was any updates. But um, I think we we um, 
spoke about this at some point. I don't remember if it was on this call or conquered together, but you know, we tried to come up with a, a way to involve the community and get some uh, interaction and a um, little competitive nature, but something different. And we thought about creating a dessert or having the community nominate um, their favorite desserts. And then the restaurants would pick one of those desserts and feature them as a special for a couple of weeks. And we keep track of it. And then, you know, between like us and Trails End and um, uh, Saltbox and, uh, you know, whoever wanted to participate, we would see, you know, who sold the most uh, based on, you know, the, the favorite dessert. And then we're going to donate a percentage of the proceeds back um, to Concord Table, I think it was, right? Um, open and, Table. Um, open Table, I'm so sorry. Yeah, Open Table. I always get that confused with the reservation system. So I, I always, <laughs> <laughs> it, it wears me. Um, <laughs> But the, uh, yeah, so it, you know, it was, it was just something, hopefully we'll get some involvement in, in, in excitement. And I think it's, you know, we've, it's something buzzworthy where I think people will start talking about it. I'm not sure how much traffic it'll, it'll generate, but it will, it will add, you know, people aren't te technically like adding a lot of dessert to their takeout order. So in one hand it will, it will help that. But I think really it was just to get something a little creative and out of the box, you know, to, to get the community um, talking about you know, something and then saying, hey, go, go try this dessert over at, you know, Trails End because I, you know, it was the one that I, I was the winner. Maybe they'll get their friends involved. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, we're excited to see what, what kind of uh, reaction it, it brings. Cool. So the other thing, because uh, I was at that call too, thank you. That was like absolutely perfect. <laughs> I'm looking at back at the notes that I made at the Concord Together meeting and shortly following the discussion of design and dessert and wacky, wacky Wednesday with a discussion about a excuse me, it says preliminary planning for a spring festival in West Concord has begun. Um, the dates uh, they're thinking about are May 19th, 20th, 21st and 22nd. How businesses will participate is still in the planning stages. Uh, there will be food, art presentations, fencing demonstrations. Uh, and it says, Beth will check with other organizations for free dates. Now, I think the, the, the person that spoke about this, I have it in my head as Franny's aunt. And I think- uh, Margo, uh, Ki Margo Kimball. Margo, Margo Kimball, that's right, I was like. <laughs> so Margo's become the de facto organizer of the uh, West Concord Business District. So um, they did set those dates and they are working with the umbrella on their plans for an art walk. I can let you know that that's underway and a story walk at the library. And they were working on what to call it because obviously we want to steer clear of the word festival. Um, and the idea is spreading it out over four days so people can come and choose and come in groups of two and three and be outside the fencing demonstration, the art as Kate said. So um, I'm really excited because they're really, they're, they're working really well with Concord Center merchants and making sure that they're having a festival on a different day or, or an activity so there's, we can spread the love everywhere. So, Jen? Yeah, I can tell you too um, that I think Ben um, at Saltbox is gonna do possibly like barbecue or something outside. We're gonna do a sidewalk sale. Um, there's a couple other, th oh, the um, Concord, the West Concord Garden, for the green thumbs, green thumbs, they're going to be selling plants. And I think, um, so everybody, not everybody, but a bunch, I'd say like 10 to 12 of us have already put stuff together. So Great. hopefully it'll be fun. We are going to try, I mentioned last meeting about the, uh, the Concord Sign Museum, which we're trying to get put together here. We were going to have that ready. Uh, Billy Crosby's uh, deadline was May 31st. But we're going to try to move that up so we could actually have an opening for the sign museum uh, within that earlier window. So we're right. working hard to make that happen. What is this? I'm sorry, Can, would you mind telling me about that or is that gonna? Um, sure, um, so uh, basically um, at the Bradford Mill, we are gonna be launching something called the Concord Sign Museum. Huh. We've got a, a kind of a, have assembled a collection of, I don't know, 25 or 30 signs that most people on this call would recognize. Um, the one that we'll be featuring first is the is uh, Maynard Forbes five and 10 sign, but we're gonna have them all clustered in as close a space as we can. Um, and each sign will have beside it a QR code and you'll be able to point your camera on that. Mm -hmm. And it will take you to a website where you'll be able to see more information about that business, that organization. So wow. actually I, I interviewed Maynard last week. So his, his will be the first 
first video to go up. Um, but the hope is that we'll have, you know, videos and supporting material for all the signs. And we've got signs from some of the Concord retailers, including uh, the Mary Curtis shop, uh, Hollis House Jewelers. So some real classics from old days. We've got some old Chamber of Commerce signs. Um, we've got uh, a sign from uh, the the uh, the old Concord Firehouse that was uh, you know Ramon's home now. There's a that used to be called the Central Station. So we've got the Central Station sign. So we have a whole bunch of signs that will be on display and open to the public. Susan, um, I noticed when I was um, downtown today that the Colonial Store sign is still up over what's going to be land vest and I didn't know. I just wanted to mention that. Yes, I'm glad you reminded me. I've got a, a note to call Bob Peterson to see what the heck he's going to do with the sign. So if people would like to give their signs away, we'll take them or if they want to retain ownership and um, loan them to the museum, uh, that's fine too. Uh, we want to have accumulated as many as we can though. So um, at some point, as I, when we get a little closer to launch and I'm confident that we'll actually, you know, be open. Um, then we'll put out, you know, some kind of a press release and uh, letting people know what we're doing and also um, calling for any contributions of signs that people may have. John, I, I have a quick question. Um, I did find the Orchard House, the old, old sign. It just says Alcott House. Oh. But I wondered where I should bring it and when. Uh, you can bring it to the wheelhouse anytime you want. Or okay. I can come, come by and pick it up if that's easier too. Oh, well, that, you know, the only fun thing, well, either way, well, you know what, I should give you a call. I don't know if I have your, whatever is the easiest phone number for you. I will send you an email afterwards. Or I'll... Perfect. Okay. okay. Good. John, I've got, I've got Anderson Photo, okay. McWalter, and I actually have Healy's Package Store. All right. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if this would, how this would fit in or if anyone has any idea, but my aunt sent me a Flickr link today. There's like 500 aerials of my grandfather's. Oh, wow. Anchored. And it's, I mean, a lot of it's like farmland and everything else. And I'm happy to forward it to anyone who wants to see it. And you can just go through it. But there's a lot of sort of unidentified stuff. There's some stuff from downtown. Some of the pictures are in um, Main Street. You can see a lot of the ones on the wall there. But these are all just aerials of all over town. It's pretty cool. Libby's been posting some of those on Facebook. Yeah, yeah they've been great. Cool. And then Pook sent me 455 today. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, I'd love to talk about the signs for sure, Kato. Yeah. Um, yeah, excellent. Fantastic. All right, um, what else we got? Any other updates before we get into the meat of our meeting, which is gonna be a little collaborative process. My, I guess my one uh, update is I was in the barber shop in West Concord uh, this weekend. And they were saying how great it is that finally, you know, the 65 plus crowd is coming out again. And they said they've actually been really busy the last couple of weeks. And that, you know, the, the fact that I, what the 5,000 of 6,000 people in Concord who are 65 plus have now been vaccinated. So they're really beginning to see that, that flow of, of people come, come out of hibernation, which is just going to be great for the businesses. So, all right. Um, if there are no further updates from any committee members, um, Kate, anything that you want to share from the business partnership that we haven't covered or that's relevant? No, I think uh, we were just really happy to hear that Maria's joining, <laughs> going to run the chamber. So. Yeah, that's exciting. Very exciting stuff to come. Thank you. Maria, we should, um, you should feel free to bring any updates you have uh, to future meetings. I will. I, I have a few bullet points now, but They'll certainly be more solidified in two weeks. So, all right. So I want to uh, shift gears now, um, and I want to come back to the topic we discussed last meeting, which is the project for which Cato put together um, a draft charge, if you will. And I'm going to try to share my screen. I can make this work. Boom. All right. Can everybody see this? Yep. Okay, good. Um, what I thought we would do was basically do some brainstorming because uh, we need to, we're all excited about this project that, uh, that we kicked off last week, but um, I wanted to put together a project plan for this meeting, but it turns out there are a lot of questions that I think we should answer together before we can actually construct a plan. So what I thought we would do is to um, very briefly review Cato's language. We're not gonna do it in any detail 
measure, uh, see how that lines up with the committee's charge. And the answer is, I believe it does, but then answer a, a set of questions uh, that um, I think are important to putting together an actual project plan. So I'm sharing this now just to remind you all, this is what, uh, this is the language that we went through at our meeting two weeks ago. Uh, the part of which is that, uh, you know, we'd like to take on a project that would allow us to identify opportunities to reduce barriers that may discourage new businesses from coming to Concord. We'll see you later, bye. I know. Um, that's kind of the heart of the project we're looking to tackle. And um, if you compare this to our, um, hold on here, yeah, to, our, uh, to our charge, um, please ignore the headline in this. This is actually an excerpt from our committee's charge. Uh, where we say that the purpose of the committee is to define economic vitality, to suggest ways to connect tourists to the business districts, uh, to look at the role of transportation, uh, to recommend revenue sources, uh, to look at how the town can support the business districts, to explore ways to benefit from regional efforts, and to balance the vitality of businesses and tourism with our collective ongoing stewardship. And of all these bullets, I think that the one that um, this project we're talking about uh, aligns most closely with is, you know, what can the town do to support the business districts, AKA the businesses? And I think that's, um, that's what we'd like to do with this committee. And, um, you know, we talk about removing barriers. I think it's also looking at other ways that we can, can attract businesses to town because um, as I said, I think we'd all agree the businesses are important contributors uh, to the town's economic vitality. So I basically identified five questions that I think would be worth spending some time together brainstorming. And I'm happy to entertain other questions as well. I just kind of throw these up here as, as things that would be worth answering. Uh, but first of all, let's think about our objectives. So what specifically are we hoping to achieve? Next, uh, the scope. You know, which town functions or organizations should be included in our project? You know, initially we were thinking this was just about um, uh, the planning department. Well, you know, there are other permitting agencies, other uh, organizations that participate in the permitting process uh, that help to set a tone uh, for, you know, you know, just how attractive is Concord as a place for businesses to, to locate and to expand. Um, based on that list of organizations, um, I think we may want to interview different people Right, and we talked about potentially inviting people to come to this meeting uh, to share what's going on in their organizations. Uh, I think there are probably more people we might want to talk to as part of this process than we can include in the public meetings. So maybe we want to kind of assign some interview responsibility to different members of the committee to go out and talk to people. Um, timing, I mean, how long do we want this project to run? Is this something we want to kind of blow through in 30 days or is it something we, we think requires more time than that? We'll talk about that. And finally, um, is there a particular committee member who is excited about this project and would like to lead it? Um, and I think the default here is that uh, we'll attack it as a committee um, led by the co-chairs, but if there's someone who really is on fire for this, um, I wouldn't want to stand in the way of them stepping up and um, taking a leadership role on this particular project. So those are the questions I propose that we discuss uh, over the balance of the meeting. But before we go on to discuss them individually, um, are there other questions that people that have things that I might have overlooked or questions we should be discussing? I can't see everyone's face on my side of my screen, so feel free just to speak up if, uh, if you have a thought, okay? The one thing, John, this is Ramon, the one thing that I was thinking is, is there um, whether there needs to be a budget involved potentially, whether that's in terms of a um, credit or you know, some sort of incentive for businesses that, or, or the function of a person. So I'm not sure how that, that might fit in. Okay. John, I was also thinking uh, along this list when you say, whom do we want to interview? Are you speaking strictly of who is already in business or well, businesses think, that we think may want to move into town? Let's, I think if we, let's, let's start at the top of the list, Marie, when we get to that one, I think I was thinking um, mostly about the people who are involved in the, who, who, who are involved on the town's behalf, working with, um, with businesses. Okay. But I think your, your, your point is that we should probably also speak to some actual businesses to see 
how they're experiencing it. That makes a ton of sense. That was just an add-on I wanted to put in. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good point. Let, let's address that when we get to that question. <clears throat> Don, I had one thought. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm a big full circle person. So I, I would also want to say, how do we know that we've made a difference or how, what does our post project analysis look like? Excellent. That's a great idea. John, I had how a we communicate too, real quickly. Um, timing when we want to deliver recommendations. Um, well, actually, first of all, the recommendations go to the town, correct? That is our charge to provide recommendations to the select, okay. correct. Okay. And could we do, if we come up with some ideas that are very easy to implement or suggest now, can we do multiple recommendations, like a early and a longer term one? I would certainly think so, yeah. Okay, and then my last question is uh, back to the, what are we hoping to achieve? Is this, it felt like there were two things. One is to get new businesses in, but I thought, am I right to understand that the other part was getting the tourists that are coming into town to visit the other parts of Concord, not just Concord Center? Or is this solely just about how we get new businesses into town? Um, this is the question. <laughs> Um, this is what we got to decide today, I think. Um, what I did on, so now I've now created a, a separate slide for each of the, um, for each of the questions. Um, so on this first question, this is what, uh, this comes directly from Cato's language. And so I think the principal objective was to reduce barriers, streamline the process, you know, make it easier for businesses to come into Concord, uh, make it easier for businesses to, to do their business in Concord. But I, I'd like to kind of fill this out a bit with some additional bullets. So I throw it up into the floor. What, in terms of making Concord more business friendly, um, what do we hope to achieve? Well, after we identify them, we would hope to remedy them and then communicate to potential businesses that what they may have heard in the past may no longer be true. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think it's a multi-step, like step one, identify what those barriers are. Step two, you know, see how to address them and, and communication obviously is key, you know, and then part of the recommendation is, you know, do we then recommend based on what we have found as barriers, then, then what is the, what is the remediation? Can so I, I add something too? Please, yeah. Um, so just to educate myself better, are we, what, how many businesses, additional businesses can we have? Because we're talking more than just storefronts, I assume. I we think this is a large, offices. yeah, What's no, that? I think it's um, a larger conversation. I think it's, okay, obviously now there's clear open spaces, but moving forward, are there things that are prohibiting a business moving in when one goes out? So I think it's all over Concord. I think it's anything that is perceived or real as a barrier to any business. So we business. probably have to break that into categories, correct? Because my gift store is a lot different and I think a lot easier to bring into Concord than a restaurant. Like, cause I don't use the water. I don't need the parking or the, you know, right? So do we need to break them into what categories on the challenges they face? I think you're right. Yeah, we need a couple of categories. Mm -hmm. I, I think, oh, um, am I alive? Yes, yep. yes, yes you are. are. Uh, I think there's several things. Uh, it's good if all of the uh, town employees can have the uh, view that they're there to help people comply with the regulations rather than find a place to trip them up. And I think we're better about that now than we were some years ago. And I think another side to that is uh, to see if our regulations are all appropriate or if we need some changes. One of the things that comes to mind right away is the uh, uh, outdoor dining seems to be a popular thing and nobody has any real objection to it that I am aware of. <coughs> Before COVID, it seemed very difficult for anybody to do it. One of the things that I sort of envisioned too, and this is maybe sort of what comes of all this, but it, it was 
you know, who's sort of that quarterback in town? And then what does that guide look like for that person that can be handed? I think Beth sort of, we talked a little bit about this last time, but I found on the city of Worcester, they have this gate great trifold <clears throat> and it goes through everything from like, you know, here's how you start a business. Here's how you write a business plan. Here's how you go get a grant. Here's how you go to loan. You know, it's just like a bunch of stuff. But then, in the, but then if you take that and you go into the town, okay, here's the person who's going to help you navigate all the different departments in town. And if it's dealing with the bylaws, if it's dealing with the water sewer, if it's dealing with the health department, you know, whatever that is to help you get a, a, a business going in town and that being sort of one of the end goals. But, and I think you're right, Jen, like, it does have to be broken down into like retail, you know, restaurant, industrial slash, you know, office or whatever it is, however we break that down because it is different. So a quick process question. I'm gonna to try to keep these in real time and can everyone read these and is this working for you? Yep. I think we also want to make clear that this includes businesses that are currently doing are currently operating in town and trying to either expand or upgrade. I'm not sure where this question or this issue would come up, but I guess the um, vibrancy of the town as far as the, the, the makeup of the businesses and I think on one of the Concord Together calls, somebody mentioned uh, something about a, another bank coming into Concord Center, and there was a lot of concern about, you know, what that does to the community and, and how it would reflect something like a, um, you know, something like what happened to Lexington Center, where, you know, there was uh, nobody's at night. It's a ghost town, right? Because all the businesses are closed at night. So, how does the balance of, you know, restaurants, you know, traditionally at night will bring, you know, more more foot traffic. So. If a business is looking for it, they're, they're wanting foot traffic. They want a community, an area where there's going to be people coming in. There's going to be foot traffic. So I'm not sure if this is something that would be brought up here or not, where we can, what we're hoping to achieve is to increase, you know, the foot traffic or um, some way for the, uh, for businesses to, to want to open it. And then we will obviously want to remove the barriers for them to open it. I like that point a lot. And I think it does belong here because it's, you know, I, I've been talking to a lot of people lately and I, you know, what do the, what do the residents want? What do the other retailers want? You know, I think has changed. And I think putting to see if the regulations and bylaws are still appropriate, but what does the community feel? You know, this has obviously been years of, you know, every time any of the, the bylaws are changed, it's through town meetings. So maybe it's time to really, really look at those and ask the community for updated feedback. You know, we've just come through a pandemic, you know, let's not make a flip decision, but what, what do we want the downtown to look like in 10 years? You know, what, what is the makeup of businesses and what, and, you know. And West Concord. And West Concord. Yeah. And I think the residents, that. you know, now know what the ramifications are, are from what was put through with town meetings, that they can't have a certain type of business come in or yeah. a certain type of business expand easily, you know, um, and there's not much they can do about it right now. So they may want to change that. I think education is um, a huge question, you know, a huge part of this, you know, yes, town employees, education, as Steve said, yes, residents, yes, businesses, um, how things work now and what those implications are, you know, and maybe hearing um, on the warrant about the, the outdoor dining, you know, when that's brought up, it's going to be positioned as a change too. So this was an original bylaw. What what in it made us want to make a change now, and why is it invalid now? So I think I think education is huge. We can take that um, spirit of Concord beyond April twenty twenty one and really make it something that residents and mm -hmm. businesses in the town embrace as just a way of life. You know, connecting making it easy to get in, making people want to get in, not just to live here, but to open a business here and make it welcoming. I love it. So 
I don't know if this would be uh, at all useful, but there is a way to do an analysis to sort of see what your community can, um, the population of your, uh, your, you know, your, your demographics and how much retail space and things like that, how much business you can hold and what kinds of businesses would create a healthy balance. And I don't know if that'd be something that would be useful to take a look at to really make sure that, um, you know, people can see coming in that there is space for, for instance, another restaurant or another retail space, because we've done the analysis and we can show that um, it might give a little bit more business confidence. I think that's great. Yeah, I love that. Does that, is, I'm sorry, I was just typing. <laughs> but is that something, does that translate into an objective? And if so, Aaron, can you say that in a pithy way for me? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so I guess it would be a um, business analysis of uh, what Concord can support or uh, a good healthy balance of businesses. Okay. Is that something you get from like municipality governance thing or is it like, because I know that <clears throat> like a lot of retail real estate brokers use that when they're trying to place someone, right? They, they know so much demographic information and traffic that goes through, or is that something that you guys have your hands on? So I'm not hundred percent sure. Um, I know that I've seen it in other uh, places and other communities. Um, it's something that um, I, I can take a look at or I can, um, I can work with Marsha and see if we have any of that information. Hmm. Okay, these are great. Great start. And by the way, this is not going to be set in stone today. So um, we'll have the chance to come back to these. But let's go on to the next question because we are, we've got about 25 minutes left. I want to be sure we get through all of them. Uh, so the next question is, which town functions or organizations do you want to include in the scope of this work? Can you, I'm not totally sure I understand what that means. I guess um, Hello? my thinking behind the question was, um, do we want to interview, you know, we want to kind of look at like the, the permitting process, for example. So I guess I would call permitting one part of it. Uh, another might be kind of our, um, you know, whoever in town is in charge of, you know, responding to businesses when they make inquiries about coming to Concord. That would be another category. Um, do we want to look at, you know, the, uh, again, who else has a hand? Who, 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 if these are the, the, the different things you want to look at, you know, we talked about. Um, I was trying to find this other piece. So like tourism. Tourism. So definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, so who from the town on the call knows? I wouldn't even know where to start aside from permitting. I, I, I would put something here for, you know, the per permitting slash regulatory. Yeah, so that that really includes every department in town from the fire department to the water department to the building department to I mean it really includes every department in town. Yeah, town hall for registering your business I just had to re register whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Um. The um, HDC. Mm-hmm. So maybe I'm gonna list these up here. That's, 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 these are town departments. So maybe we want to say then maybe maybe town committees are different, right? Like the HCC is certainly one of them. Um, yeah. Board of Health would be another. Um, are there other kind of town committees that are particularly important? Do we think zoning board of appeals, planning board. Natural resources. And then you've got the advisory committees, such as the West Concord Advisory Committee. I know it's taken some time for a certain property to get to a point where they, <laughs> they could get their plan approved, <laughs> their building approved. <laughs> mm -hmm. I might have heard about that one, Marcia. <laughs> <laughs> I think you have. <laughs> And isn't the Board of Health a town department instead of a committee? It's both, Deborah. It's both. But I mean, the, the Deborah, the one that may be more challenging would be probably the health department or health division. Uh, 
I don't know if it's any more challenging than water and sewer. Well, we'll add them to the list then. <laughs> don't forget about us. Yeah, us too. <laughs> You're right. UBC. <laughs> oh, yeah, we're, we are real badass. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because I my, my thinking was that this list would this is kind of like the, um, the these are the folks we want to be sure we talk to and understand in terms of this process of of whether it's permitting, welcoming, helping to navigate you know through the the permitting process. These are the groups we should certainly be be understanding, right? So we should be reaching out to understand, for example, you know how does the health division interact with retail businesses, with restaurants, etc. Um, so I think a broader list now is, is good and we may choose to, to kind of shorten it at some point, but are there other, other bodies that, that we should be talking to? Are there other regional folks that have an impact on, on Concord's attractiveness? I'm not sure there are, but I'm just going to, again, just brainstorming here. Not sure if it's regional, but is there a transportation department? Does that even exist? No. Okay. <laughs> um, you know, what about... What about current and former select board? Um, I say that because they may be able to inform on why decisions were made. They may, they may have a lot more knowledge to share about why a bylaw was recommended or why an amendment was made or something like that. I, I feel like there, I run into things often that you know, it would be really nice to know why those decisions were made 10, 20, whatever years ago. Um, I know we have an archivist. I don't know what he has exactly. Um, I, I, his name is Nate. That's I think that's all I know. But uh, I don't. It may be interesting to look through some of the older files to see if we could get a glimpse of, you know, why a decision was made uh -huh. at a time at a point. More key interview too, though. On in the next question. Yeah, maybe. Yes. Yeah. Some of that might be in the old town reports as well. There's also um, the finance department uh, every two or three years does a town survey and going back through that survey might be important because one of the things that I, uh, you know, planning is involved in a lot of development. We have a longer term view of the community, but one of the things that I find really challenging is that the community doesn't always like the direction development goes and there's no way of really fleshing that out. Um, so, so we're ranked on, you know, are, are you satisfied with the direction of development is, is one of the questions. And um, we're rarely uh, fully satisfied. Some say it's good, it's okay. And, but then there's those that say, no, it's not going in the right direction. And so maybe checking that history would be valuable. Okay. That makes sense. I think particularly where we come up with, with issues that are kind of a thorn in the side of businesses, understanding why that exists as, as a means of you know, remedying them. That makes a lot of sense. And another challenge is, is the, the push to go net zero or non-carbon. Um, so requiring people to think about heat pumps and where their source of electricity comes from and how we're pro promoting all of that is, is something that we're hearing from the public um, and people who are concerned about climate change. Right. So maybe include Sam LP. Yeah. Or the sustainability director. Or Yeah, or the sustainability, yeah. That's a great idea, yeah. We've run into an issue with our uh, proposed zero waste store is that it conflicts with um, FDA rulings that were interpreted by the state of Massachusetts in such a way so that people will not be permitted to bring in their own containers to fill with food. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's a very complicated and complex issue and it's not all set by the town. Mm -hmm. hmm. You're saying so these are more, you know, citizen agendas around things like sustainability do influence the town's, you know, policy making, right? But the town can't do anything 
to work on sustainability because some of them fly in the face of Massachusetts, state of Massachusetts rulings. Oh, okay. Yep. Hmm. If we can identify those, we can begin to think about, so identifying them. Yeah. I mean, what's really and then we can try and change them statewide. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think it is overall important, you know, as we talked about education is, you know, transparency, you know, there, it, it's not one person making a decision or determination. It may be made because it's a state regulation, as you said, Deborah. it may, you know, it may not be town of Concord. It may be state of Massachusetts. It may Correct. be federal. I think transparency mm -hmm. and education will go a long way. I agree. So let's now go on to the next slide, unless we have anything else you want to add to this right now. Again, we can come back to these anytime. Um, I was thinking, who are the people we want to want to interview? I think that um, we'll need to do research into all of this stuff. Um, so I guess this question really is, um, you know, how do we want to go about gathering data? Do we want to invite people to our meetings? Do we want to um, kind of uh, assign committee members to go out and, and, and speak to different different town departments or different committees. How, how do you suggest we go about this? I think the town um, departments probably would be happy to meet with us. I think um, business owners perhaps would be more chatty, um, not on a meeting, you know, if there's a relationship between neighbors, um, there might be a good conversation there. And we could come up with the list of, you know, eight to 12 questions that we're trying to get feedback on. Uh -huh. I think, um, I think inviting maybe picking out groups of people, you know, and we one week we have permitting come and just 15 minutes, you know, 10 minutes, whatever, we tell them what our objectives are. We ask for their opinions. That way you're not A, taking up a ton of their time. You know, we're inviting them to one meeting for 15 minutes. Um, that might be something that you could do with certain departments. So then we actually get, we're less spread out. We have, today is permitting, today is um, whatever. Um, my tourism, I, you know, you name it. Um, that that might work for us to have like the same couple of questions that we have each group address. Uh -huh. um, that way we're getting consistent information. Good idea. Yeah. You may have to do more than. What? You may have to do two or three committees. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Per time. Yeah. Just right. so that this doesn't go until 2024. <laughs> That's also Airplane. a good way to we get have a lot of committees. Yeah, but we can also see how they interconnect if we're yeah. cherry pick the three committees that are on a particular meeting because we yeah. know they tend to right. send people back and forth between the departments. Right. Like, let's figure out who makes sense to bring together. Mm -hmm. um, seems like a third group is just um, it would be uh, the, the kind of the committee chairs. Maybe we do the same thing. I, mean, I like the word you said. You said questionnaire, Don. Um, seems like we should have. We should come up with a set of questions um, that you know maybe they're probably going to be different for each of these audiences. But uh, so I'm just going to add committee chairs as a as a source of information on you know on their committees, but asking them to respond to a questionnaire. That'd be about, easy enough. To yeah, go ahead, Aaron. Oh, that'd be easy enough to do with the, there's a, a, a listserv for the boards and committees that we can send something out to. Okay. Perfect. What about residents? I was thinking more residents who've had been involved with stuff. Um, yeah. I, mean, I mentioned I mentioned Henry last meeting who was on here for a minute, but, you know, an attorney in town who's dealt with some zoning and, and other stuff, <clears throat> people like that. Fritz. Also, yeah, Houston, I think would be, a, am I, can you hear me? Yeah, here, yeah. I think, yeah, the property owners yes. would have feedback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, landlords who have dealt with tenants who may not have succeeded. Yep. 
or had to would, make a um, choice. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's residents is one, and I think business owners and property owners, I think they're different sort of categories. Yeah. Well, who's, a, who's an example of a resident that we would talk to? I'm thinking, you know, if we're talking overall, if we're, if we're discussing things like what mix of businesses do people want to see, then that is a question that applies directly to residents, you know, they, and, and in the educational part of who's in charge of what and what regulations control what, I think, I think it's important to have their, their buy-in, their way in, their understanding of how, you know, what they're voting for, like you said, at town meeting, they may not know when they say yes to things, they may not see the implications. So I think right. maybe getting us using this interview section as a way to figure out what they know or don't know. Right. Mm -hmm. So business owners, I'm sorry. Yeah, business owners, town staff, committee chairs, residents, and then uh, business and property owners. And, and historical stuff too, right? Say more about that. Well, we were talking on the last slide about past select board members, past committee chairs, Chris Whalen. Yep. Yeah. A business that left that we might still have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. Or a business that was going to move in and couldn't. Yeah. Um, I hate to do this. I got to jump. I got to go do some carpooling before Alexa gets on the school committee. Thank your wife for her thank contribution, you. Kato. And thank you. Hi, Kato. Every Tuesday. Hi, Kato. <laughs> See you guys. Okay. I think okay. we should talk to Deborah since she's going through this right now. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Again, in the interest of time, I'm going to jump onto the next slide, and I'm, I'm going to. I'm not sure how I'm going to synthesize all this and come back to you guys with the project plan, but but I'll come back with something for the next meeting. Um, Let's just talk about timing. What's the ideal uh, deadline? Someone said 2024. Obviously, that's <laughs> great. Um, I, think, um, I think somebody mentioned multiple right. end results. I think that's fair because I think some of these we may be able to, they're not, we're not asking to change a bylaw, right? So some of these may be able to be accomplished through the select board um, in a, in a, end of summer or, you know, as the pandemic wanes or, or something, I, I'm just throwing that out there. And then, you know, certainly by the time we need to do anything, should we want to make a formal recommendation to alter, to get on the town warrant, things like that, we obviously have to work with the town schedule for future years. Um, yeah. So I guess the idea here is let, let's, let's figure out what type of recommendations we're going to be making. And then we can time those once once we are confident <laughs> that we are about a particular recommendation and we understand who's empowered to make the change, whether it's select board or a town meeting or some other body. Right. Like, there may be things you can just go to the planning board chair and say, hey, can you do this a little bit differently? Right, exactly. Right. Depending on what where our outcomes are. Since we're getting so much data from interviewing people, it would probably be useful to set targets for establishing those interviews and synthesizing what we learned. So we are, as a committee, understand what we got out of those half a dozen sets of interviews. And it's already the beginning of April. Um, right. Yeah, if you're going to put a project plan together, you know, phase one is answer this phase two two months or whatever. Yeah, that would be really helpful. Right. Okay. It might be the, the businesses are perhaps, um, you know, talking to current business owners, people who want to come in, people who tried to come in, that might be the quickest one to get to since those would be less formal conversations based on the you know, again, eight to 10 bullet points that we come up with. And that might give us an idea of how to prioritize what town departments we want to talk with first. Mm -hmm. will, and it will lead to the next group. Mm -hmm. Maybe some that recently left also. Yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Even businesses that have changed ownership have probably had some things they've had to deal with that they might not have known about and would be able to give us some useful data. Right. Is it, are we allowed, I mean, can we as a committee, can we brainstorm those potential contacts offline and send them to a chair to have that kind of as a starting point for the next time we meet? Or does everything have to be done here, you know, open meeting? My understanding is that, um, that committee members kind of like, you know, wheel and spoke and send the information into the center. But mm -hmm. there can be no deliberation on that on that information. So, okay. if I guess I would say I, I like your idea, Don, of people coming up with um, specific names or you know that of people we should interview early on, and I would invite you send those to me, um, and I will then um, incorporate them into a kind of a, a revised set of, of of planning slides for our next meeting. Super. I think there can be a subcommittee with a member and non-member participants to do some things. That was talked about at the last meeting, Stephen. My understanding from Susan was that that person still had to, the non-member still had to fill out a green card. And I think we stopped going down that path. Am I, oh, is that right? I, I may be misremembering it, but I thought we had some, a brief talk about that. Um, and, and backpedaled on it. Yeah. So does that preclude somebody like Congress Business Partnership sending out questionnaires to its members? Not at all. Yeah, so that's what I was. This, uh, so this is where Concord Together it has been a really helpful thing. I'm, I'm actually gonna turn the, uh, turn the slides off now, if that's all right, stop sharing so we can all see each other again. Um, that's where Concord Together has been really helpful in that um, it could take kind of take its lead from get ideas from this committee mm -hmm. and go off and kind of run with them, right? Um, so I think in the same way that if this committee comes up with um, with some questionnaires or survey forms, uh, it would be wonderful to be able to rely on the partnership to distribute you know those requests for information and bring them back. Absolutely. The chamber will also be very efficient in being able to help with that um, within about two weeks. Great. Jen. Hi, quick question that just came to mind. I assume the answer is no, but one of the things I wonder is, does the town in any way track businesses that have seriously attempted and wanted to come into town and then didn't? Like, cause I know we're looking why they, how do we make it easier to come in? It'd be really good to talk to businesses that wanted to or just not just decided not to. I assume we don't have that, but it seems like that would be pretty helpful. Well, we may be able to find that through some of the commercial property owners that are members of the partnership because they may have had people interested and then back out, so. We have so many fishing expeditions <laughs> come through. Um, Jen, I, I'm not sure that we'd even be able to document all of them. Um, I can't tell you how many in a week people ask about, can I do this in my at this property or this at this property? Um, or how do I redo it? And they, um, we, we try to be as creative and as flexible as possible in, in how we how the zoning gets interpreted. Um, but some people are, are really um, come up with some really wild ideas. So <laughs> we could try to capture that if that would be useful. I but wonder if in the future, I don't know if this is possible, could we ever, for anybody that inquires, send them a quick survey that maybe follows up and you can weed out the ones that aren't serious? I don't know. Yeah, a possibility. I do think it would be Idea. interesting to, to be able to, if we could actually you know, have data on, it's a really good question, Jen, have data on how many businesses call per year not just with some harebrained idea like you know Marsh is kind of referring to a little bit, but how many make a serious a serious run at it? I mean, I've heard stories of of, of different you know businesses that have come in, and they've worked with the landlord, and then after some number of months, to say you know what it's it's the the, the hurdles are too high, we're not coming. Yeah. That's right. I think you're right, Kate. That there should be some partnership members who would have who may have some names or people we could talk to to put some scope around that. 
Okay, because we only have three minutes left and we do have some visitors from the uh, from off the committee, I'd like to pause the discussion of this for now. I'm not sure what I'll come back with uh, in two weeks, but hopefully something that's a little actionable. Um, but I'm just curious if anyone, any of our um, uh, citizen participants would like to ask a question or make a comment. Okay. Um, very good then. Um, I guess we do have two minutes left. Would anyone like to, any further comments or any, any suggestions? As I say, send me your, uh, your, your questions. Um, it would be nice. I do think we're gonna get to the point where we're gonna have questionnaires uh, for each of these different audiences. So if, if anyone just has a bunch of you know, questions you wanna brainstorm that you think would be worth asking, whether it's asking property owners, business owners, um, committee chairs, uh, town staff, start to develop, let's start to develop that list. And I'd love to be able to have kind of a starting list ready to share at the next meeting. So, um, so the two requests for homework are one, who do we want to talk to? And two, what do you want to ask them? So if you could uh, submit those, those ideas, that would be really appreciated. Jen. And uh, John, this is on the thing of getting new businesses in to Concord, not I, about existing, right? I think, I think it's both new businesses, but also it could have to do with permitting for existing things. So we've heard a lot about restaurants trying to get permission to do outdoor dining, right? There's a process there. So, so, so it need not ex be exclusively about new businesses. It could be about existing businesses. All right. In that case, uh, we will take our standard roll call vote to adjourn the meeting. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. Donald, thank you. Second? Okay. Okay, Don, going around the horn here, Steve? Aye. Jen? Aye. Beth? Aye. Uh, Ramon? Aye. Deborah? Aye. Don? Aye. Uh, Jan? Aye. And I vote in favor as well. So thanks, everybody. See you in a couple of weeks. Have a good night. Bye. Have a good night. Bye.